how do you view this dichotomy of formal education versus informal, aka pursuing knowledge for the joy and the fulfillment and the passion of it? Formal education felt like a prison, for lack of better words. It felt like a sentence that had to be paid every day. That's what school was to me. I was always taught what to think. I was never taught how to think or why to think this way. And it wasn't until I broke away from formal education did my understanding and my interest actually peak. And I started finding things to pursue that I was passionate about. I've got a wall of credentials and certifications from formal institutes like uh, Agoski University, Stanford School of Medicine, National Academy of Sports Medicine. These are all very practical, uh, great, great formats for education. But the things that I do and teach are from how I've come to understand the world, not what I learned in those textbooks. So formal education and I don't get along well. I have very adverse reactions to it, not to discredit that or to look down on it. It is really important that licensed professionals are all uniformly taught what the current education and understanding is. But in that same breath, we need to be taught how to be critical of that, what's being taught. And that was not being present in formal education. There was no criticism of the textbooks. It was learn the textbook. This is right. This is what you're going to be tested on. Not who wrote these textbooks? What are their viewpoints on the world? And can we have another historical textbook on somebody who maybe isn't of this demographic? What do they say about history? What are the archaeological finds that are important to them that have shaped their view of, of modern, uh, modern civilization? There was no learning how to inquire sources. It was just Here's the information, learn it. And I had to break that really poor habit getting into helping people with their health. I had only learned how to read the bottom line conclusion of studies, not really taught how did they get to this conclusion. Let's look beyond the abstract. Who are the people doing the studies? What do they believe? What is their background in education? What do I dislike about the study? What did they do well and what did they not do well? These are the things that I was not taught in formal education that I had to learn the hard way. Maybe it was the institutions and schools that I went to didn't teach this. Maybe others out there with formal education saying, what do you mean? That's exactly what we were taught. It's, it, it wasn't my experience in formal education. The key point that we're talking about now is the power or the process of vetting. A very simple way to identify and parse through hosts and plethora of researches and studies out there. Well, first of all, make sure it's peer reviewed, period. That's a great starting point. And then look at the abstract to see how many complex and jargons are used in that abstract. The more it is, avoid that. That means the author or the authors don't have great commands over the knowledge or the studies because the best Scientists and best teachers can simplify language. And that's something I'm working on a lot. And it's trying to avoid jargon because jargon is often more self gratifying than provides benefits for the readers. That's two points. The third thing is, as Vinny alluded to briefly, look at the conclusion and look at the shortcomings of that study. If a peer reviewed research does not have an in depth portion where it talks about the shortcomings of this trial or study, avoid it because there's a lot of biases, confirmation bias, normacy bias, groupthink bias, on and on. The last thing is what Vinny said. Go into each author's name and look them up to see what sort of a corporate or biased interest do they carry, and B, are they even credible as a researcher, as an author of this study? For example, if let's say Vinny, and Vinny has a research publications about movements or pain, and that, that, that's what the article is about. Yet his background is in depressions or anxiety or something that's sort of related, but not really. Avoid that because the person is not an expert in the subject. If you enjoy watching that video, click that side for the full length episode. Hope you discover something new today and see you again next time. Thanks for watching.